What is up? Welcome to another edition of the NFL Fantasy Football Podcast. It's me, your man, MG Marcus Grant, alongside the Fantasy Hall of Famer, Michael Fabiano. Grant Barfield uh, is off today, should be back for Friday's show. Uh, I know it's not football, but uh, you got to be floating on cloud yeah, nine right now. Yeah, baby! I, so I go to bed early because I'm an old man and I can't stay awake. So apparently that whole news broke about Garrett Cole like at like 9 o'clock, but I was already in bed and the phone was just charging. Wake up this morning, I got a text from Jerry O'Connell, and it just says, Cole, exclamation point. I'm like, go to Twitter. What happened? $324 million, nine, nine years. I am over the moon. I got to have something to be happy about. My fantasy teams are doing really good. My Cowboys suck. And now I got the Yankees getting Garrett Cole. We lost Didi. That kind of sucks. But Eddie, I mean, you know, but listen, good. Y- I mean, you're in New York. You like the Giants. You know, your, your football team's not any good. It's a it's weird time in New York, yeah. They're really <laughs> thinking about it. Like you have the Yankees sky high, the Giants, like, dealing with right? potential coach and GM firing, and then you have, like, the Knicks. The Knicks are the Knicks. The Knicks are, uh, I think, are at, really at an all-time low. Oh, um, man. Like, you have, I mean, not to get into hockey, the Rangers are a good young team, but still having some bumps and bruises. It's like a, it's a very strange time, but, I mean, <laughs> the Yankees, the thing is, like, and I tweeted this a little bit ago, if they... I understand they're back to the evil empire. We haven't won good. A champ- don't care. We haven't won a championship in a decade, and so P- I get why they did. What they had to do, and if they didn't do it, Cashman would have been ridiculed. Yeah. But part of me does wish that like Cole just went to like the Angels. And the Angels no! were a mediocre team. Listen, why? Cu- why? The Sox because the Sox are going to sell off parts. Uh, the Astros might get some kind of death penalty, and it's like if the Yankees kept Didi, I think they still had a path to the World Series. I would have liked to be Cole and just be- won with the homegrown guys and the the lower free agents. But I get why they did it. I'm now, I'm bro. happy with it, but I just. Some of the smartest people in baseball have said that that Garrett Cole was, was, <laughs> Yankees, was the biggest free agent in the history of oh, Major League I mean, Baseball. The, the dollars had proven I mean, that, until, yeah. the, until the next biggest free agent. <laughs> sure. Right, exactly. Yeah. But for right now, yeah. So, I, I mean. I, I, I will I will say this, like, because I know the Dodgers were sort of in the running. I don't, I'm not really heartbroken that they didn't necessarily get him. I will say the Yankees sort of still have the same problem that the Dodgers do in the sense that. Neither one of those teams really manufactures runs. No, and for that's all, a big problem. And for yeah. all the pitching in the world, uh, lift and separate has shown that it doesn't necessarily win World Series titles. The no, Dodgers have struggled know. with that. The Yankees have struggled with mm-hmm. that. So mm-hmm. uh, as a Dodger fan, I'm still I'm still hoping that Anthony Rendon Yankees still have some pieces that, that yeah. 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 I don't I don't disagree at all. As I'm saying, in terms no. of team building to make this more of like a general sports slash NFL type, no, like you, just, you. You, you do like to win with like the scrappy homegrown guys, the lesser known guys, instead of winning with like the big price tag free agents. But it is what it is. You know, it's funny. It's also what I gave Red Sox a hard, Red Sox fans a hard time about because they were always these scrappy homegrown teams. Team and they always railed against the, yeah. uh, the Yankees. And so they went on their run, and I'm like, well, how does it feel to be the new Yankee fan? You know what's there? great, though? And that you know what's great, mad. though, right now? Like, and, and I grew up I grew up in Connecticut, so you know, I'm a tri-state area Yankee fan who despises the Red Sox and doesn't particularly care for hearing about the Patriots constantly. Boston's going south in terms of sports. Mm. They're two biggest teams. The Red Sox, they gave too much money to Chris Sale. That, that contract's going to kill them uh, for the next several years. They're trying to trade... David Price, from what I hear, mm-hmm. and the Patriots. Ah, don't say it. <laughs> You're gonna jinx it. Don't say it. They're struggling. Don't they're say it. They're struggling. Mm-hmm. They're struggling. They're not struggling. <sighs> they're not gonna lose again the rest of the year. They're yeah, struggling. Yeah. Well, they're yeah, playing the Bengals this week, so yeah. there's. I didn't say they weren't gonna win the Super Bowl. I said they're struggling. Thanks. <sighs> All right, we got plenty to talk about. We'll talk to Jeff Ratcliffe. Uh, we'll talk about. Guys who are finishing strong this year and uh, what that means for them potentially next year. Also, uh, kind of an overview of what we think of Week 15. I know you guys will get into it a little bit deeper on Friday. Uh, and then drop or not. Uh, you did hear earlier from our faithful producer, Senior Edward L. Murphy Esquire. So uh, here we go. Let's, uh, let's do some news. Uh, we'll start in Philadelphia. Alshon Jeffrey left that Monday night game with an injured foot. Uh, he's going to have an MRI on it. It's considered significant. In fact, it is significant enough uh, that he is done for the year. Um, so, Fabs, I mean, look, Jeffrey's gone. 
Uh, we're not sure about Nelson Aguilar, but it's not looking too good for him. I yep. mean, right now they're sort of down to J.J. Arthago whiteside They've got Greg Ward. Uh, I joked on Twitter that they're going to sign the gang from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> uh, to come and play wide receiver for them. It's bleak, and I don't know that I necessarily trust. Look, I I thought Arthago whiteside Arthago whiteside was going to be a deep sleeper this year. Yep. Maybe, but I don't know that I trust him or Greg Ward right now in the semifinals of my play. And I mean, we're still waiting on Aguilar too. Right? right. He's been banged up too. I don't know what his status is going to be for week 15 a little bit too soon there but it brings up an interesting point right because you know the Eagles have on paper what looks like a good matchup against the Redskins right uh although Aaron Rodgers didn't do a whole heck of a lot against them so maybe it's not as great of a matchup but uh they ran the ball successfully and a lot of people out there including myself had kind of stashed Carson Wentz because we were waiting for these matchups here you know he had Miami he's got the Giants uh and now they got the the Redskins and the next week he's got the Cowboys I now I'm sort of like okay. I mean, he's not as attractive as I as I had sort of you know thought he was going to be, <laughs> right? Because he has no Alshon Jeffrey, um, and I mean he, he did have almost 20 points, but he did have that touchdown pass in overtime, so he took you know, it took more than four quarters from having uh, a decent stat line. Obviously, the one player thing that benefits the most outside of Zach Ertz, which is obviously, and Ertz is doing it again, right? Right, and late season, late season And then you rally. Thanksgiving, and all of a sudden he's a superstar again, but. Uh, Dallas Goddard mm -hmm. is is going to end up being a top ten tight end play this week because yep. the Eagles are short on uh, on pass catching options and Goddard is still out there in some leagues, guys. So if you maybe if you lost Ryan Griffin last week or uh, you've been streaming tight ends, I mean if he could end up being out there in some leagues. Yeah, uh, staying in the state of Pennsylvania, some good news for the Steelers: James Conner and Juju Smith Schuster expected to return to practice this week. Both those guys have been out for an extended period of time. Um, I mean, I feel like at this point in the season, like if you have those guys, you are probably in a situation where you have to put them in your lineup, especially James Conner. Uh, Juju, maybe you can sort of dance around that one a little bit. The matchup's not good yeah. uh, against the Bills, well, and it's a Sunday night game. Well, the, uh, for, for Conner, it's, 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 it's not bad. But here's the problem. It's a Sunday night game. Isn't that right. the Sunday night game? It's a Sunday night game. So, like, unless you have Benny Snell, like, you kind of you kind of can't play Conner because – Unless we know, if it, you know for if sure. he has 100% a go, and even then, the last time he played Marcus, he was 100% a go. He didn't even make it through the first quarter. Right. So, like, I, boy, I tell you, that one, I have Connor in in, uh, in a couple of my leagues that I'm in. I, one of the leagues I do have Snell, so I'm sort of uh, I'm insured there. And the other one, I don't think I can play him. Like, uh, even if they tell me he's going to be 100%, blah, 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 blah. I've heard this song and dance before. He's a risk. Like, I mean, maybe he's going to go out there and have 25 points. I don't know, but he's too risky for me, man. I, he's too risky for me. <laughs> uh, and which, which really stinks, too, because uh, people have kind of been sitting and waiting and hoping. Right. Um, and, like, this is, this is sort of the time of year you, you need him. Um, yeah, if you have Snell, you wait, and then you see what happens. And if right. Connor plays, then good. You pu plug him in and hope, hope for the best. But if, if you don't have him, I mean, unless you have Devin Singletary and you can sort of put him in there, if, if Connor doesn't play, it's hard. Yeah. That's not that's not an exciting matchup. No, it's not. Point. Pittsburgh's defense is nasty at home, and this is something that, again. You know, we'll talk about on Friday, but Josh Allen should not be in your starting lineup this week. Probably not. Pittsburgh's defense. That's the only defense in the league that made Lamar Jackson look like a mere mortal oh, this season. Uh, speaking of quarterbacks, Jameis Winston has a broken thumb, but he is expected to play against the Lions. Jameis. Do you have any concern about that? Because I have Jameis in a few leagues. Of course I do. Any, any concern? Of course I do. Okay. Um, I mean, one, just because, you know, you never know which Jameis is going to show up from week to week. But it's the now, Lions, though. It's well, the Lions. it's the Lions. That's, that's the good news, right? Yeah. That, that's, that's a really good matchup. But now you're also talking about Jameis with a broken thumb. And like, how well can he grip the football? Is he going to sail a few of them high? Is he going to throw some worm burners? Like, you just – like, I feel like – I feel like I would take the chance and put him in my lineup, but I also wouldn't be surprised if he gave me like seven points. Yeah, right. Like I just, you just never know. It's the, but I feel like against Detroit, I mean, he should be able to give you like a floor of you know fifteen. You'd hope so. You would think so. You'd hope so. So, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. Detroit has made some some pretty and quarterbacks look pretty good <laughs> this season. So we'll find oh, out. Who knows? Um. Uh, bad news for Darius Guys, he is on injured reserve. The yep. good news is that it's it's just an MCL strain. It's not a, it's not a torn ligament or anything like that. So uh, he should be ready to go by the time we get to training camp next year, and, and hopefully uh, we'll be all systems go at that point. But it just you know, look, Adrian Peterson's the next guy up. More than anything, it just it just stinks for a guy who has really you know 
embraced Washington. Washington's embraced him. He's got a ton of talent. It just he just hasn't been able to stay on the and, field. And it's just been bad luck. Like that hit. Yeah. I mean, you know, it wasn't anything that that had to do with you know Darius's lack of durability. It was just. The hit right on the knee. Yeah. And I was talking to him the last couple of days. He's in good spirits. I mean, he, he, he obviously, you know, wishes his luck was a little bit better. But he also feels like he has proven that, like, when he's on the field, he can be that RB1 for the Redskins. So going into the next season, obviously the durability is going to be an issue. He will be 100% going into camp, and he will end up being one of those guys that you're thinking could end up busting out uh, in 2020. Yeah. And I think you even said that, like, earlier in this season. You said, I like him for 2020. Yeah. And I think a lot of people are going to agree with you there. Yeah. Um, don't normally talk about a lot of defensive players uh, in this part of the podcast, but the 49ers have lost a couple of big ones uh, for multiple weeks, potentially for the rest of the, the NFL regular season. Richard Sherman, uh, D. Ford, both dealing with hamstring injuries. They are going to be down for a little bit. This is a Niner defense that, look, a lot of people have been counting on. They've been playing well. The last few weeks, though, they've given up some yards. Obviously, last week against the, the Saints was a shootout that we didn't see coming yeah, it, by any stretch sure. of the imagination. But they have kind of given up some yards the last few weeks. Now, all of a sudden, they're they're missing two key defenders. Sherman's having a, a great year. Mm-hmm. Uh, D. Ford's been a great pass rusher. Um, I mean, how do we feel about them this week against an Atlanta defense that, or Atlanta offense, rather, that has – talent they haven't really put it together yep. uh i mean are we are we concerned about them well i'm gonna ask you you're the niners guy right so like i mean i have the niners defense in a few leagues the seahawks are out there though i love that matchup in carolina right the chiefs are out there i love that matchup against drew lock okay houston's defense was awful last yep last week but i still like the chiefs defense and you know as you mentioned the niners defense you know hadn't been all that great lately the matchups haven't been favorable though so you know do you do you fade the niners losing two key components on the defensive side of the football and go with the Seahawks or or Chiefs or something like that? Or do you stick with the Niners? And, you know, Atlanta could put up some points. They lost Calvin Ridley, unfortunately, but they could score some points, too. I mean, yeah, I mean, I probably would because I I have a feeling this game could end up being sort of another high scoring one because the the Falcons defense can't stop anybody. Right. Uh, We've seen Garoppolo play well. We you know, we we know what those running backs can do. Um, so I could see the Niners kind of putting up some points and and being in a situation where Matt Ryan's got to throw the football. I could end up seeing this. I can see this end up being a fairly high-scoring game. So I might actually kind of go away from the Niners and look elsewhere this week. And that's a Niners fan, folks. Yeah, right I mean, there. I think I think San Francisco still wins this yes, game. Yes. I think they're a better team overall. But um, yeah, they that defense might take some hits this week just because of of you know, everything that's going on there. So uh, last bit of news: Colts have signed wide receiver Dontrell Inman. Uh, they they need bodies right now. Yeah. Um, Still really no updates on T.Y. Hilton, but I'm just kind of on the assumption that he's done for Why? the year. Why? Uh, I just don't I don't see any reason for him to come back at this point. But uh, Paris Campbell just went on injured reserve. Add that to the litany of wide receivers that they have. Saints uh, defense is another good play this week. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're not playing Dontrell Inman, right? We're Hell no. <laughs> okay. No. May, I'll play him in a Dontrell Inman only league. That's probably <laughs> the only league I'm playing him in. Yeah. Can't do it. Uh, but, you know, if anything, it's just – Zach they Pascal just, and, I mean, even Marcus Johnson. They just know. need bodies out there right now. They just got to fill some wide receiver spots because they are really hurting at the position. Yep. Um, I expect to see, by the way, that the the Eagles maybe go out and sign somebody in the next day or two because uh, they mentioned need help too. No one wants Des Bryant. Yeah. Nobody wants – You That's know what, what would be like, uh, you know, as great as the Yankees going out and signing Garrett Cole and I'm like over the moon about it. Imagine if the Eagles signed Des – Beat the Cowboys in Week 16 <laughs> with Dez, and then would went lose on its mind. to win the NFC East, which I hope they do. Fly Eagles, fly! Um, and the Cowboys are left at home, uh, hopefully preparing to fire Jason Garrett on Black Monday. Man, but I mean, if, I've heard no buzz at if, all about that. If Dez Bryant were somehow signed by the Eagles and beat the Cowboys, Twitter would go. Berserk. I know, and I mean, like you know, not for nothing, but Antonio <laughs> Brown's still out there too. I mean, uh, I give the Patriots credit, I guess, because like you know, with all this cheating stuff that's going on with the Bengals, like they they could sign Antonio Brown, and that could solve a yeah, whole lot of their problems. But uh, they're not going there. As you as you say that, Antonio just sent out a tweet that's not going to help him get signed. What did he say now? Um, I will quote it. Okay, the owner sent the hit to the media. Media carried it out as the agent and NFLPA witnessed me go down. No help, no protection. Full takedown on us every time. And it's a, uh, it's him photoshopped into a what looks like some sort of medieval style biblical painting where it's like a gladiator, and so he he has photoshopped his face on someone who's bleeding out on the ground while there's a gladiator 
carrying a shield that says... Is that Rosenhaus there? That's uh, Rosenhaus? Drew Rosenhaus and D. Smith are watching and a gladiator with a shield that uh, well, it has the NFL Network logo. It has ESPN's logo, uh, and the sword has Sports Illustrated on it. So uh, Antonio's last. He's got to so be. I'm he's got to be like bipolar or I'm, something. I'm I mean, wearing the practice. I can't uh, see it. The, game, <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't see it because he blocked me on Twitter. Like, uh, a while ago. yeah, the Patriots practice jersey is what he's wearing Who in this. Did this? Did he? There's no way he did this. No, yeah. he's got. You know, I'll say this. He does some wild stuff, but he's got some good social media people. Yeah, he, does. You know? he really does. I'll give him credit for that. Uh, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that uh, nobody's going to sign him uh, after this. So, uh, good luck. Uh, anyway, there you go. That is pretty much everything you need to know. That was the news. Joining us now is our friend and occasional guest, uh, Jeff Ratcliffe from Pro Football Focus. Jeff, we are nearing the end. The light at the end of the tunnel is there, and it's not an oncoming train. We, uh, everybody's kind of feeling a little bit more relaxed, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> After last week, that was the craziest Week 14 I've ever seen with all of the injuries. Like we, Week 14, we've seen it in the past where weird stuff happens, but the carnage across the league – unprecedented and you know it's, it's just a fascinating week here You're, it's kind of the equalizer week around all fantasy football because regardless of your league size you're most likely down to just four teams remaining in the hunt now so it's 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 an in- interesting one for sure with all these injuries uh well since you, you you brought that up i mean let's talk about that because i mean look a handful of guys right mike evans is done for the year rashad penny is now done for the year alshon jeffrey looks like he's out marvin jones uh you know just to name a few if you've got to pick one, who is the most impactful, you think, of all those guys that are now pretty much shutting it down for the year? Honestly, I think it might be Rashad Penny for Chris Carson owners because you look at it, the stars have sort of aligned. You had Chris Carson heading into the fantasy playoffs, and you're like, man, he's dropping down to RB2 territory. Now with Penny out, I love C.J. Procise. I have a soft spot in my heart for <laughs> C.J. Procise, but he is not Rashad Penny. And they get the Panthers. Everybody is running all over the Panthers. I have I have Chris Carson as my number three running back this week, and I'm all in on him. So, you know, if you were able to make it through with Carson, you're set up for a big week here. Yeah, no question about that. And uh, speaking of the playoffs, so you had thrown out uh, a tweet about how people who are out of their playoffs should no longer be allowed to make ad drops. And you got a whole bunch of kickback on that <laughs> so go, go through sort of your reasoning i, for I that. admit to fanning those flames a little Mar- bit Mar- 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 marcus marcus is the resident uh flame fanner let's put it that way so g- give, give me your give me your your sort of opinion on that because to be honest with you uh we may disagree on cranberry sauce i agree with you here so i know that a lot of people and i'm glad to hear that because that that cranberry sauce is another one that took off <laughs> Um, Cream sauce you know, is wonderful. My thought process: people misunderstood. I don't mean when you're you're eliminated from the playoffs, like week eleven. Hey, make as many waiver moves as you want. But once your regular season is over, it really should only be the teams in contention making waiver moves. And people will say, well, what about a consolation ladder? What if you're playing for money in the consolation? First and foremost, why are we freaking giving money to the playoffs? <laughs> Secondly, they'll say, well, what about avoiding a punishment? Is it not making waiver moves a punishment? Come on. I, I just I, I'm not really sure where people are with this one. Marcus, I love you, but we definitely disagree. I, here's the thing. I, I enjoy the opportunity to be an agent of chaos. And really, I'll, I'll be 100% honest with you, right? Like, chances are, if I am eliminated from playoffs, right, like, if, if the regular season's over, I'm not in the playoffs, I'm probably not going to do anything, right? Like, I got enough other leagues, I got enough other things in my life to pay attention to that I'm probably not going to be that. But the contrarian in me, the, the angry, you know, bitter person sometimes in me says, you know what? I at least want the opportunity to mess up your life if I can. And maybe, maybe I won't take it, but I don't want you telling me that I can't. And so that's, you know, you, you, that's, that's you know, the, the pouty, you know, 10 year old. You know what I do, Jeff? Uh, as a commissioner of all my leagues, once people are eliminated from. The postseason. Now I'm talking about week starting in week 14, assuming that it's a three-week uh, playoff uh, schedule. I 
I just basically lock everybody out. They can't do anything. Mm-hmm. So because why? Like you're out. You, you didn't make it. Uh, I don't run consolation brackets. Okay, I'm not giving trophies for for you know effort. It, it just it, that's not what I do. So every single round in the playoffs, like you know. Somebody gets knocked out, you get locked out. That's it, man. I mean, you made a good run, your season's over, and now you've got to allow the teams that are still alive to have the access to the best players off the waiver wire. And, you know, it always cracks me up, too, because the teams who, in November, they're not making any moves. They All of a sudden, they fall out of contention. All of a sudden, week 14, when they're not playing anymore, they want to make moves. People have said to me, hey, I'm paying for 16 weeks of playing. No, you aren't. No, you are not. You are paying to try and win a championship. This is not an arcade game. It's more like a poker tournament. And when you get knocked out of a poker tournament, you don't go sit on the side and, you know, set up some chips and and, and keep playing. You you move on to the next tournament. It's okay to lose. It's not a problem with that. Hey, if we didn't know what it was like to lose, we wouldn't appreciate winning when we ultimately do. Yeah. No, I look, I understand your argument. I just like being the guy who, you know, occasionally upsets the apple cart kicks down the door and you know just just ruins things for everybody else you know if i can't win i'm gonna make it harder on everybody else but whatever uh to each to each their own um speaking of i guess teams that aren't in playoff contention when it comes to fantasy right for the people who maybe are looking ahead to next year this is the time of year where we start kind of looking at guys performances and i know sometimes we all kind of make the mistake of looking at how a guy finishes and maybe trying to project that into next year and and trying to figure that out when you're looking at a guy's draft value. And and I was looking at some guys who have had some strong finishes in the last few weeks, trying to figure out maybe what this means for them next year. The guy that that comes to the top of the list for me is Todd Gurley, right? And, And early in the year, uh, the Rams were very much about load management, about trying to save him, about trying to keep him healthy for a postseason run. Then all of a sudden, Sean McVay looks up. Uh, they are very much in danger of not making the playoffs, and now they've decided to take the wraps off of Todd Gurley. He's been the, a top 10 running back over the last month. He's scoring 18 points a game, it seems like. When we get to next August, are we going to remember what happened with Todd Gurley from, you know, say the start of September till about Thanksgiving? Or are we going to look at this last few weeks and say, you know what, uh, Sean McVay's not going to make this mistake again. Todd Gurley's going to go back to being a workhorse running back. I think we have to remember it. And by the way, this rise of Todd Gurley has had an impact on Cooper Cup. If you watch this game against the Seahawks, they ran 12 personnel, two tight end. 70% of the time, and when they go to two, 12 personnel, the slot receiver comes off the field. So Cooper Cup owners, that's where he was. It wasn't that he's playing poorly. It's just because of that tendency. But we can't overlook this because we don't want and, – and, I mean, this is an extreme example. We at least have a track record with Gurley, but we don't want Damian Williams year and year and year. You know, <laughs> last year, Damian Williams was awesome in December, but that was all he ever really had as a pro – with Gurley, though, obviously we know he's got more than that, but we can't overlook the fact that Todd, or, or, that Sean McVay loves to spread that offense around. And when they're at 11 now, it, it, it's it's not as conducive to what they've been doing recently for Gurley. So I still think he's able to produce RB1 numbers, but I don't think he's going to be one of the first running backs off the board, regardless of how he finishes. So Joe Mixon was a guy that uh, in the middle of the season I was trying to buy low on in some leagues. And he's been great. Uh, you look at his numbers. I mean, you know, seventeen over seventeen fantasy points uh, over the last six games. He's been averaging. Had a huge game last week. He's got the Patriots this week, right? So we had two big running backs who were added off the waiver wire this week in Raheem Mostert uh, and DeAndre Washington. If you're staring at Joe Mixon on your roster, he's been great. Oh, okay, for more than a month now. But he's got the Patriots this week, and their defense is nasty good against running backs, and game script could be an issue. Are you fading Joe Mixon for two guys or one of two guys that you just picked up this week? I actually am in my initial Woo-hoo! set of rankings. I have <laughs> wow. I, I, I love the fact that Mixon performed well, despite the fact <clears throat> that you had Ryan Finley under center, the return of the red rifle. Yep. But still, Mixon just kept going and showed how good of a player he is. I mean, hopefully they they grow in the offseason and they really prioritize getting him the football in 2020. But you look at Washington, Jacksonville gives up chunk yardage. So if Jacobs, in fact, is sidelined as we expect, Washington is a – he's a front-end RB2. And Mostert, I mean, hey, you, if it happens two weeks in a row, it's a trend. It's not a fluke. 
And I think we have to ride that in the Kyle Shanahan revenge game. How dare you let me leave and be a head coach? <laughs> revenge. Yep. We'll get the re- but we got to ride that with Mostert. So I have them all as RB twos, but Mixon is the lowest of those three. Wow, he's close, but yep. he's the lowest. I, I mean, he had a he had a good game against the Rams. Uh, I believe that one was that was overseas. I believe he had a really good game against Baltimore. And you know the Raiders, you know, and eh, Pittsburgh, he kind of floundered in. Uh, and the Jets in Cleveland the last two weeks, he's been uh, very, very good. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Josh Jacobs, I don't know if you saw on Twitter yesterday where Jacobs has said that like. I guess people are getting on him about being hurt and uh, how it's negatively affecting their fantasy football teams. And uh, I, I responded to that, and we went back and forth a little bit. That's the one thing that annoys me maybe more than anything else about our about our, our, our great industry uh, and this great thing called fantasy football is when stupid, moronic people go on Twitter and reach out to players who are hurt. This is their livelihood and complain that they hurt their fantasy football teams. You in with me on that yep. one? I am with you. Can't I almost stand it. Cursed, I almost cursed about it too, Fab. So I mean, stupid. Hey, it, it is, it's what gives fantasy a bad name. It's what's still holding us slightly back overall. Remember, these guys are doing their job, and we are lucky enough to be playing a game based on their job. It's yep. not the other way around. They're not here for us. You know, it, it's I, I am 100 percent on board there. It's it's stupid. Yeah, I, I used to have these conversations with D'Angelo Williams. He hates fantasy football because he says that it basically makes a player, it, it turns him into a robot because people don't care. They just want points. And I'm like, boy, I tell you, you got to be better about that. Anyways, uh, I digress. <laughs> uh, last thing, uh, and this is one that we sort of had for as food for thought on our pod this week. Uh, just something, you know. Look, I don't know. If there's a wrong answer. Just one we've been kicking around. You have the decision to make a quarterback this week. Ryan Tannehill, Patrick Mahomes. What are you doing? I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I can't believe Say it, Radcliffe. Say choice. it. And you know Say crazy? it. I'm going to be like Sam Kinison and back to school. Say it. Well, I am not actually going to say probably what you want me to say because my rankings currently have Patrick Mahomes at four, Ryan Tannehill at five. I'm a man of my word. I am starting Patrick Mahomes. So, did you really draft Patrick Mahomes in the second round to bench him in the in the fantasy semifinals? Hey, man, a lot of people a lot of people drafted Joe Mixon in the second round, and he's got the Patriots, and I'm benching him. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, maybe I'm going to be wrong. I I would start Tannehill over Mahomes this week. I, Mahomes is awesome. He is not right. The matchup's bad. He has not been a good fantasy quarterback for most of the last month. He's had one big game. Tannehill is playing at a higher level right now than Patrick Mahomes. And if you think I'm crazy, go ahead and, and, and hit me up on Twitter. I'm right. Tannehill's been playing at a much higher level at the quarterback position than, than, than Patrick Mahomes over the last month. It is what it is. It's weird to say it, but it is what it is. I don't know if the matchup is bad, though. It was bad earlier in the season, but they're a top 10 matchup for fantasy quarterbacks over the last five weeks. So and we saw, hey, Deshaun Watson. It well, wasn't Watson had a couple so of rushing bad. touchdowns there. It was garbage time. So, um, but no, I, I get it. I, I get it. But still, you know, it's an NFC West game. I, 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 I just Mahomes scares me, man. And Tannehill's hot right now, dude. And every single week, you know, you're waiting for the wheels to fall off. You're waiting for the wheels to fall off, and the wheels just get get. They keep picking up steam. They keep going faster and faster and faster. And Houston's defense is terrible. They made Drew Lock look, look like John Elway last week. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Maybe next week uh. you'll come on or whenever you're on next, and you'll be like, see, Fabiano, you're an idiot. But you know what? This this season has gone sideways a lot. So I'm going to, you know, I, I guess I'm going to uh, go the contrarian route I think. Here. I think it's, I mean, it's, it's look, look, in the end, by the time the week is over, we will have a definitive answer on what was right or what was wrong. I just think it's been an interesting conversation to have this it week. It has That's been, all. dude. That's all. That's it. And, 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 and no and doubt it, about it. Yeah. It's close. It's close. Like, I have them four and five. It's not like I have them four and 15. <laughs> so for a lot of folks, that could legitimately be a coin flip. But I'm going to stick to my rankings on this one. I got my homes. A little side wager here. You win, you get some cranberry sauce. Oh. Uh, homemade, homemade, homemade cranberry sauce? You have to make it at home, and I want video of you over the stove cooking that cranberry sauce. I want you to send it to me and, uh, you know, wrap it in a nice number uh, 17 jersey there, Titans, for Ryan Tannehill. That'll be a wonderful Christmas present, actually. I'm sure that'll allow <laughs> and, and, and I will, And I will make you mac and cheese, which I make for my kid like three days a week for lunch at school. Um I'll send you a little bit of that. How about that? A little Cracker Barrel. Wow. Can, uh, can, right. can we say that right. on the air? Sure. Yeah. Why not? Okay. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jeff. Uh, oh, real quick. Uh, where are you taking Le'Veon Bell in your fantasy bowling league? 
Oh man, uh, first overall, obviously. <laughs> was was laser tag closed that night? <laughs> Only because CJ Anderson is no longer in the league, right? Because like he's got a couple yeah. of three hundreds under his belt. If I'm not dude, CJ could he could bowl. That dude's a monster, so. man. When it comes to bowling, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff, let folks know where they can find your work out there. Sure, over at pff.com and uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Jeff Ratcliffe. Hey, appreciate it as always, Jeff. Uh, be good. We'll be in touch. All right, guys. Take care. Uh, thanks to Jeff Ratcliffe for his time. Always appreciate uh, chatting with Jeff, even on the things that the three of us don't always agree about. Uh, it is always fun. Um, so I talked, uh, we asked him a little bit about guys who are finishing strong and maybe what we think about them next year. And uh, what kind of brought this up for me was. Our pal, uh, friend of the show, just personal friend and uh, giant within the fantasy community, Bob Harris. Earlier in this year, we had him on, and he talked about, you know, don't draft last year's best team. Is go out and find the discounts where you can, uh, see the guys that you know maybe uh, you know have some potential, and see if you can you know, build a team around those guys. And I think sometimes the way we do that is we look at guys who maybe aren't who weren't great early in the season, but maybe who finished strong. Sometimes that works out for us. Sometimes it completely blows up in our face. But I picked a handful of guys who have had some strong late season runs. And you know, I'll get your thoughts, Fabs, on what you think of them for next season. Is it just a case of maybe a good schedule? Maybe they just got hot? Or is this like something a little bit deeper with these guys? So uh, start with Jimmy Garoppolo, who we came into this year not knowing – who exactly he was. I mean, he'd had fewer career NFL starts than Baker Mayfield at the beginning of the year. The last month, though, he's gotten hot. He's the QB4 over the last four weeks. It looks like he's getting comfortable in Mike Shanahan or uh, Kyle Shanahan's offense. I mean, is this a case of he's just kind of gotten on something hot? Or or is, like, is this the Jimmy Garoppolo that we always thought he could be coming out of New England? Listen, I, I mean... The Saints' defense is is no joke. Right. I mean, that just went sideways. That game was ridiculous with all the points that were scored there. But I mean, Garoppolo showed me something. You know, he's had he's had some good performances. You know, you kind of forgive him the following week in Baltimore, the, the rain and it was nasty out there. But he's put up some pretty good numbers. I know some of these teams that he's played haven't been all that great. But listen, from a pure football perspective, he's winning games, and he showed that he can go into a hostile territory against a defense that's pretty tough and win a big game going back and forth with a future Hall of Famer. So you've got to like that from a fantasy perspective. I'd love to see him finish strong. He's got Atlanta this week. Then he's got the Rams. That's a big one in week 16. Uh, you know, the, the always, you know, the issue is that, you know, any quarterback who's not named like Lamar Jackson or Patrick Mahomes is going to be worth, you know, more than a later round pick in right. fantasy. But, right. I mean, he's absolutely positively going to be drafted. He won't be a QB1 next year in drafts. He'll certainly be a QB2. And you also have to see what the Niners had around him, too, because, right. I mean, that Debo Samuel, boy, I tell you something right now. That guy, he he reminds me of Anquan Bolden. He is fun to watch. He is a strong wide receiver. He's going to have a full year under his belt, National Football League level. He's going to get better. He'll have Emmanuel Sanders for an entire season as well, you would think. I mean, George Kittle. Right. Yeah. It, things are looking up. I see you smiling. But no, I mean, look, I mean, this is a guy that in fantasy, uh, there were – Plenty of leagues where he didn't get drafted at all. But exactly. like now he's yeah. going to be in the conversation yep. next year for sure. Uh, another quarterback who actually is right behind him in the last four weeks, Mitchell Trubisky, right? Like, I know I look at Trubisky and I'm just like, ah. like, it never excites me, right? Yep. And, but he's had three pretty good games in a row. But then you look at who he's played, right? He had one against the Giants. One against the Lions. Two against the Lions. Two against the Lions. It's true. Uh, so he's a two against the Lions, one against the Giants. And then last week he had 32 the against Cowboys the Cowboys, stink. who are just in a downward spiral right yeah. now. And this is sort of leading me to believe that this isn't necessarily about Trubisky. This has just mostly been about the guys lining up against Exactly. Him. Trubisky's still an average quarterback, uh, and he's below average in fantasy. You look at some of these defenses that he's played. When he's played the Chargers, seven points. Really good pass defense. At Philadelphia, their defense is really good at the link. Six and a half points. Then he has the game against Detroit. Looks good. Then he goes to play the Rams. Ten points. Okay, the Rams defense is pretty damn good. Uh, Allen Robinson was locked up that week. Then, I mean, Giants, Detroit, and Dallas. I hate to say it, but those three teams stink. All right? Oh, Cowboys, sorry, Eddie. Uh, but they're, they're just not any good. The Cowboys are awful right now. And I will say this, though. If the Bears are going to game script him to get some of that running that he can do on a weekly basis, if if they're if they're going to actually like call runs for him, 
that's going to help Mitchell Trubisky's fantasy value because I had posted a stat last year about him in that when he had a certain amount of rushing yards and or a rushing touchdown, he was pretty good. Right. If he didn't, he was bad. And if they're going to let him run with the football a little bit, well, that could improve his value, certainly. But do I trust Mitchell Trubisky against Green Bay at Lambeau Field? Not really. No, sir. Yeah, and that's the thing. I'm, I'm very curious, at least in the offseason, to see, you know, obviously the hype about Matt Nagy when he took over in Chicago was how he was an offensive genius mm-hmm. and how, you know, he was supposed to kind of uh, mold Mitchell Trubisky and make him into uh, a solid quarterback. And... I just wonder whether or not they're going to you know, take the, the, the leash off of him and let him run a little bit because that really is a big part of where his success comes from. Sure. Uh, I mean, I think we've seen you know through a couple of years that he's not just a pocket passer. I know there's the, the Twitter narrative slash joke that he can't throw left. <laughs> that, you know, like it, you know, yep. people like to point out every time he throws left and he just sails one or throws it in the ground or whatever. Um, and so I just wonder whether or not that's going to be a thing in the offseason that Matt Nagy and the Bears look at is how do we you – know, a few designed runs, a few just times where he just gets out of the pocket and he scrambles to make something happen because I think that will completely open his game up and yep. I think make everything better uh, for the Bears. Um Calvin Ridley, you know, we didn't talk about the fact that he is on IR now too. Yeah, uh, he that posted sucks, that. Man. He posted that on Instagram. Uh, he's got an abdominal injury, so he's going to miss the rest of the season. Look, last year – uh, he was a top 25 wide receiver as a rookie. He actually had more touchdowns than Julio Jones. Yep. This year uh, – Has more touchdowns than Julio Jones more, again. And, and as we sit here right now, he actually uh, has, I think, what, two and a half, three more fantasy points than Julio Jones. Obviously, that's you know that's not going to end that way because Julio's still playing and, and Ridley uh, is on IR. Yep. But I'm feeling like at this point, Calvin Ridley has done enough in essentially two seasons – that we're going to be talking about him as maybe, what, fourth, fifth-round pick next year? Yeah, I would say fifth-round pick. No question about that. Um, I mean, dude, listen, and he's just he's just getting better. Um, he's getting better every single season. He, you know, he had, he's going to miss a few games. He, he could have gotten to 10 touchdowns. Who knows? Maybe it's unlikely. Um, but he, he was the number one wide receiver from a fantasy perspective in Atlanta until he had gotten hurt, and especially over his last four games. I know Julio missed one of those games, but Ridley was balling out. I mean, I, I know there were some garbage time points, but they still count. Very talented wide receiver. And, you know, next season, that Atlanta team, you get in there healthy, you know, with Matt Ryan and Hooper and Julio and, and Calvin Ridley and, and maybe some other uh, ancillary pieces that they could potentially uh, add. Maybe they get a running back. You know, that offense could be pretty explosive next year. But, uh, yeah, Calvin Ridley was, was a real steal this season in drafts. He was tremendous. He had a bunch of stinkers early, mm-hmm. uh, but he really turned it on when he needed him the most. And, you know, that injury is very unfortunate. Uh, last one here. I mean, we, we talked about Joe Mixon and Todd Gurley, who were on my list. We talked about them with uh, with Jeff Ratcliffe. But Jarvis Landry is another one who, you know, obviously the the marquee name in the offseason was Odell Beckham coming yep. to Cleveland. Which, by the way, do you think he stays in Cleveland no, next year? No, I don't. I mean, you're hearing like reports that he's telling other players, you know, that he wants out, and right. he had tweeted out that you know that's not true. I I don't know, but sometimes where there's smoke, there's fire. They he. <laughs> I, I I was actually hopeful that he would put up a decent line against the Bengals. It didn't happen. And it and it just, I, I it's not the same dude. I, I listen, man. I again, I've said this all year. I I I I just yearn for the days of Eli Manning and OBJ. You know, like because they they just they haven't utilized him correctly. Uh, the targets haven't been there. Baker Mayfield, although he's been under pressure a lot this season, he tends to go to the safer option, which has been Jarvis Landry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they do have two really good running backs right now in that backfield, and Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, uh, who's catching a, a ton of balls out of the backfield as well. So uh, yeah, OBJ could end up uh, on his way out. We'll see. Yeah. You know- I think the Browns are going to go through another major overhaul this offseason. I mean, Freddie Kitchens likely is not going to be back. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they do get rid of Odell, I mean, that, that changes so many things there. But Jarvis Landry is you know, where I was actually going with this topic here. Um, I feel like he's that guy that we always sort of, I mean, we, he kind of hangs around in the middle rounds. And, uh, you know, maybe you're not always super excited to draft him. But, I mean, he just keeps doing his thing, right? And right now, he's a top 15 wide receiver. He's had seven straight games with 11 or more fantasy points. Is he going to still hang around in those middle rounds, or are we going to get overexcited and maybe overdraft him next? Yeah, I I mean, it really depends on what they do with OBJ, to be quite honest with you. But, I mean, Landry is a guy, remember, I mean, he was a top 10 wide receiver for one year with the Dolphins when he had a career high in touchdown catches. 
And I wasn't on the Landry Badenwagon. I would have been like, uh, I tried to fade him in some drafts. I, I ended up with him in a couple of leagues. I made a trade for him that involved him in one of my leagues as well. So uh, sort of benefited from that. But I would be lying to you if I told you that I thought Jarvis Landry was going to be the best fantasy wide receiver in Cleveland. I think everybody <laughs> can agree that everyone was wrong on that one. So the, I think the problem with Jarvis is that he doesn't get into the end zone a lot. Right. But he's seeing so many targets in the middle of the field from Baker Mayfield, as I mentioned before, that – He's he's getting you. I mean, his floor has been like 11, 12 points, mm-hmm. and and there's been certain games. He had that huge game, the revenge game against Miami, where, yeah, right. where it just went ballistic. It's nice to start a guy. It's it's kind of like Julian Edelman, right? It's nice to start that guy where you know, you know, minimum you're getting 12, 13, 14 mm-hmm. points from him every single week. Well, and Jarvis has sort of turned into that guy. Yep. Uh, didn't see it coming, but that's kind of where and we I are mean, right the now. The matchup this week against Arizona is great. They struggle against the slot, and that could end up being a high-scoring game there uh, in Arizona. So. Yeah. Uh, so it's gonna be one to watch. Definitely, it's gonna be an interesting game because you know we I talked about that last week. It's it's a battle of. Heisman Trophy winners who were former college teammates. That's right. Uh, with Kyler Murray coming behind Baker Mayfield there at Oklahoma. Uh, two defenses that you know, can give up some points, too. So this that, yep. that could be a potentially interesting Should be uh, fantasy game. All right. Uh, looking at just kind of week 15 from a, a you know the 10,000-foot view, if you will. Uh, I know you and Graham will get into it in more in depth on Friday. But I, I went through a handful of guys that um, – on paper, seem like you know they're very startable. Like you want them in your lineup, but the matchups maybe aren't great, um, or maybe they are. Uh, so I called it "Be Brave or Beware" when it comes to starting some of these guys. The first one up, Kirk Cousins, who uh, is very you know, is playing very well. Uh, I know people sort of like to kind of look down on Kirk Cousins or whatever, yep. but I mean the dude's playing some good football. He's the QB yeah. ten so far this season, and and he really is good for most weeks. You know, eighteen to twenty points. He's got the Chargers, yeah. Um, who I know the Chargers don't really have anything left to play for, but defensively they're still pretty they're tough, tough on quarterbacks. Yep. Uh, I mean, look, he's obviously not an automatic start, but I would think that there are a lot of people who are probably on the fence about Kirk Cousins I, this I, week. I am one of them. <laughs> I have him in one of my leagues. He's my QB1. Uh, he has been for most of the second half of the season. And I picked up Jared Goff because I got to think about it. Mm-hmm. I, I had picked up Ryan Fitzpatrick hoping to play him this week. But now, you know, with Devontae Parker hurt and Albert Wilson hurt, I don't know if I can trust Fitzmagic uh, throwing Isaiah Ford. So mm-hmm. I, I, I went out and got Goff because the Cowboys have been horrible against quarterbacks. And so I got to think about that one. Right. That, that's one of those decisions where I'm going to be, like, reaching out to Bob Harris. I'm like, what should I do here, man? Because I'm really <laughs> on the fence. Uh, you know, there's a couple of guys, you know, like Bob in the industry. And I'm like, eh, what do you think about this? Um I mean, he only had 13 last week, and we loved him. And right. against Detroit, I mean, it was game script. He, he wasn't terrible. Uh, they didn't really need him to throw the football very much. But, yeah, you're right. The Chargers have been really tough on quarterbacks all season long. It's a road game. Um, if I've got Ryan Tannehill, I'm fading uh, right. Cousins. No, if I I've agree. got Kyler, if I've got Garoppolo, uh, maybe if I have Baker, mm-hmm. if I have Jameis, I'm fading Cousins, and again, my my conundrum is going to be: Do I trust Garrett, Jared Goff, a guy that I've been crapping on all year long mm-hmm. against the Cowboys? <laughs> do I play him over Kirk Cousins, and I have to still make that decision? Ah, uh, yeah. What do you think? Um, <sighs> see, it's not easy. No, it's definitely not easy. I think I think I would lean toward. Cousins, what is the status of Adam Thielen? I guess that's another Who question, the hell right? Knows, bro? Like, I have no what clue. is going on with I Adam have Thielen? No idea. It would be really nice to get him back because then, if I got Thielen back, then I'm feeling a little bit better about maybe starting Philip Rivers. But I have no idea because it seems like there's been times where he's been close to returning, right? And then you know we get the rug pulled out from under us, and we're like, ah, can't play him. I mean, a quick Google search says that the Vikings are quote optimistic he will return against the Chargers, but I feel like we've heard that. Before. And that's also that's also a late afternoon game uh, out here in, in, in Carson. So yeah, I feel like I feel like we've heard I, this I, optimistic I, thing yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I gotta look. I, I gotta see what time the Cowboys game is. Is that I don't know if that's a later game because it's it's you know two big teams. It is. Uh, it is an afternoon game. The is four, it four twenty five Eastern? Okay, so then so then I can figure out who I'm going to start at that point. Probably there that's what go. I'll do. Um, Matt Ryan, uh, who last week Matt Ryan had twenty points, twenty one points against the the Carolina Panthers. That was his first twenty point game in a while since week six. Yeah. <sighs> On paper, the Niner matchup is bad, but we talked about earlier, right? No Richard Sherman, no D Ford, so that pass rush, uh, you know, takes a hit. The the secondary takes a bit of a hit. Mm-hmm. I said I think it could be a high scoring game. I know Matt Ryan has scared a lot of people off right now, but 
weirdly enough, this might be a startable spot for Matt Ryan. This is like so th- this is what I told people like last week about Garoppolo. I wrote it and started him and said him. I didn't like the matchup for Garoppolo, right? Because I mean, right. I'm looking at the numbers, and but I did say this could go shootout. Mm-hmm. In which case Garoppolo goes off. Uh, the numbers are suggesting because you know trust the process. Um, this is one of those scenarios where it's it's very similar. Whereas that like this game could go bananas, mm-hmm. and in which case Matt Ryan throws the ball over the field. You know he did lose his, one of his top options there in Ridley, as we talked about a little bit earlier on. So that could could potentially hurt him. But he's got Olamide Zacchaeus uh, now. Whatever. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I I I can't I I can't play him. I can't trust All him. Right. It's a road game. I can't. I'm, I'm not going to trust him. Not right. going to do it. And, you know, actually, uh, Jeff Ratcliffe brought this up. I didn't even think about this. The revenge narrative for Kyle Shanahan. I, You know, I, I had overlooked that part. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Interesting. I uh, mean, revenge narratives are just going out of control. Oh, they're out of control. Season, everywhere. They're balling out of control. But, but you know what, though? We should go back and look. Like, how many, like, Jarvis, Cole Beasley, How many guys Ryan have Patrick, gone off in revenge like, yeah, games? Yeah, exactly. There's been a bunch of guys who have actually, gonna have, like, went you know nuts, man. I'm totally going to do that. Gonna be, I'm making a note. That's going to be an off-season project. I love it. The revenge project. Love it. Um. Last week, the Charger running backs both just had huge days. I mean, everybody obviously remembers Austin Eckler. He had 31 points, 100 yards rushing, 100 yards receiving. But, I mean, let's not overlook the fact that Melvin Gordon still had 19 points, right? I mean, yep. he had you know, like almost 85 scrimmage yards, had five catches, had a touchdown. I mean, he had a really nice day fantasy-wise. Uh, these are two guys that we know get the ball a lot in this Chargers offense. That's good. The bad thing is they're playing the Vikings yep. this week, who have been very good against running backs. They don't even allow a lot of receiving yards to running backs. It's not just rushing yards. They just don't really let running backs beat them. I feel like this is a big decision for a lot of people. You know, do you? know, How much faith do you have in Melvin Gordon? How much faith do you put in Austin Eckler against a defense that really is designed to kind of stop those guys? Yeah, I'm playing those guys, man. Melvin Gordon, I mean, he's been, even when he's been mediocre, he's still giving you double-digit points. He's back to being the Melvin Gordon that we all know and love over the last few years as a, as a running back one. I'm playing him. And Eckler, too. I mean, Eckler, 100 receiving, 100 rushing last week, like very Roger Craig slash Mar- Marshall Falk-esque right. in his stats. That line, I'm playing him too. Like, I mean, the, I think I think the the question this week is, do you play Mike Williams? That's the one that I'm a little bit because the Vikings are terrible against perimeter receivers, uh, and, and and you know we we've seen that you know basically week in and week out. So I think he's going to be in a lot of lineups because you play Mike Williams because right? so I mean, many wide receivers are injured right now too. People who no, lost I, I'm, I'm Mike right Evans or Alshon Jeffrey or Marvin Jones. I mean, I think I think Mike Williams is going to end up in a lot of lineups. I'm right there with you. Yep. Um. This is a big one. Alvin Kamara, who has just, I mean, he hasn't scored a touchdown since week three. He has two touchdowns. Ever. He scored them both in the same game. That felt like a lifetime ago. Yep. Um, I mentioned on Fantasy Live that the the Saints are throwing the ball. And it was something Graham Barfield actually pointed out, too. The Saints are throwing the ball inside the 10-yard line more than they are running it. Last year, it was the other way around. Um, and even when they do run it, Latavius Murray's getting a lot of those touches. The Colts' defense uh, has been pretty good this year. So I know it's hard because you, you probably spent a top three or four pick on Alvin Kamara. It's hard to sit him at this point in the it year. Is. But, is. man, this is just not yeah. – you can't feel comfortable about it. No, you can't. Not at all. I mean, he's had two touchdowns. All, all year. year long. This is a guy who had 31 touchdowns in the first two seasons he played. You could have thrown out a lot of stats at me in the, in the preseason and said and just like wild stats. And Alvin Kamara scoring only two touchdowns would have been one that I would have said, "You're out of your mind." Honestly, so we There's get no way. You know, we get uh, projections in from you know we've outsourced our projections and in some instances uh, here for the site. And every year we go through them and we look and to see the things that just seem really egregiously bad. If they came back to us and said Alvin Kamara was going to have two touchdowns, we would have been like, send this back. Yeah. Send it back. You may want, you may want to say You, you want to check that again. That yeah. can't be right. But, I mean, I, I, he, he single-handedly knocked me out of a league last week. Because, um, I mean, I, I think I lost by like five or six points and he had like five yeah, or six points. six points. Yeah. I'm like, all I needed was, you know, 13 from Kamara, not asking too much, and he's been a disappointment. You know what it is? It's it's what I used to call uh, the Craig Biggio conundrum. Um, you know, like when I played fantasy baseball, it's like it's that thing where you, you see a team and they score like 15 runs, but your guy is the dude who's like one for six. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what last week was. Like the Saints put up all these points. They move the ball up and down the field, and somehow Alvin Kamara gets six points. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, exactly. It, it was. It was. 
again, one of those situations where, you know, if you had told me the Saints were to score that many points before the game, I would have been like, oh, Kamara's going to go off. Uh, by the way, quick, quick update from uh, our own Ian Rappaport. Mm-hmm. Raiders running back Josh Jacobs underwent an MRI on his ailing shoulder after not playing on Sunday, but the scans checked out very positively, sources say, and Jacobs is expected to return to the field this week. Barring a setback, should be just a one-week absence. So if you spent your waiver claim on DeAndre Washington, God sorry about your it. luck. <laughs> sorry about your luck. Um, yep. But Josh Jacobs in a huge spot, though, against the Jaguars this week. So there yep. you go. Yep, so that that's that, that goes from, you know, having DeAndre uh, and, and being very happy about potentially being able to flex him to I just blew a waiver claim on a guy who I can't play. <laughs> yep, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Uh, so there you go. Uh, last one for Be Brave or Beware. Cortland Sutton, who has you know, had a breakout season this year for the Broncos, um, is, you know, even with Drew Locke is getting in, getting targets, getting that sort of thing. But the Chiefs have been tough on, on wide receivers that play on the outside. Um, I mean, are we are we confident enough in Cortland Sutton that we're giving him a run this week? Yeah, dude, he's still in my top 20. And I, I, he didn't have a great game last week, but he, is, he has overcome so many tough matchups this year. I'm still playing him. I will tell you this, though. As good as Drew Locke looked last week, I'm expecting major, major regression from him this week. Arrowhead Stadium is one of the loudest arenas, uh, excuse me, stadiums in, in the entire league. Mm-hmm. He is going to be under pressure from that Chiefs front seven. They are still playing for playoff seating. It's a rivalry game. You know, Broncos, Chiefs, AFC West. I love the Chiefs defense this week. With that being said, Sutton is still, I mean, at, at worst, you're flexing him. At, at best, he's probably a wide receiver too, but at worst, you're flexing him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is another guy who his draft stock is going to go through the roof. Uh, oh, yeah, dude, season. next year, man, yeah, I mean, he, he was already sort of like on that like sleeper breakout list uh, going into 2019, but we're going to expect him, I would think, uh, you know, as, as a fantasy industry to make that next step to being an absolute stud in 2020. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, before we get out of here, just a handful of guys that uh, may be still on your roster that maybe shouldn't be on your roster anymore, uh, and you can tell me whether or not you agree or disagree, or maybe you have some more even. Uh, John Brown who the last few weeks has uh, not really done much. The schedule isn't great the rest of the way uh, for, for the Brown or the, uh, the Bills wide receivers. I mean, this week they've got the Steelers. Next week they've got the Patriots. Uh, I feel like John Brown, maybe it's time to, to say goodbye if you need to fill your roster somewhere else. Yeah, and, and we sort of said that because when we looked at his matchups late in the season and he was balling, I told people, I'm like, dude, sell high on him because right. his matchups get bad. Pittsburgh's defense is good, but they're really good uh, at home. And then I believe they have the Patriots right after yes. that. So, I mean, like, at this point, if you want to go out and get uh, a hot free agent, it seems weird to say, right? <laughs> but John Brown is not a guy that you can trust over the next couple of weeks, and we've only got two left in the fantasy playoffs. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. I was digging around, uh, you know, through our – the, the, the roster percentages and that sort of thing. Sammy Watkins is still on a shockingly high number of rosters uh, on NFL. I feel that's just like a name thing. Like it's people gotta be read the name and they want a part of the Chiefs offense. Almost seventy four percent of rosters has Sammy Watkins. And like literally he had he had the huge blow up game in week one for one ninety eight and three touchdowns. Yep. Has done nothing since then. Yeah. He, he hasn't even scored. He hasn't even had a 14-point a game since then. And you don't want him against Denver. You're not going to play him against the You're, you're not going to play, play him against the, against the Broncos, right? You're not going to play him against the Bears either. So um, that's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, 74%. I, was, I saw that yesterday and was floored. Guys, <laughs> I, I say this too. You know, when you're in the playoffs, I said this, you know, uh, over a week ago, that you can't have dudes on your team that you're not going to use. And you look at the schedule, you're not going to use Sammy Watkins, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't like having dead spots on my roster. I would rather go out and look at my opponent's roster and see that he needs a tight end or he needs a defense or whatever the case may be and go out and block him and drop a guy like Sammy Watkins. I'm not going to use him. Yeah, I just, I really do think it is just people just want a piece of the Chiefs offense. But that was last year and for the first half of this year. <sighs> Having a piece of the Chiefs offense right now is not all that great shakes. It's not. Yeah. A.J. Brown's a better finish receiver by a freaking mile Man. than Sammy Watkins right that, now. Like I said, I saw that yesterday. It was just, just my mouth was hanging open. It was amazing. Yep. Uh, Latavius Murray, who uh, I, I thought even after Alvin Kamara would come back from injury that Murray would still have a role in the offense. Um, he obviously hasn't 
He's barely he's barely getting touches right now, and yeah, maybe he is getting touches near the goal line, but it just is not consistent enough, I think, to keep him on the roster. Uh, look, if you need running back help, I think there are other options out there. Uh, apparently not uh, DeAndre Washington now. But, no, uh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but there are other options out there. I think you could say goodbye to Latavius Murray, too. Yep. So uh, before we go, yeah. you know, we have this uh, this podcast, uh, Listeners League, that we had. We, we did a little contest there at um, uh, uh, the Yard House there in Rooney Del Rey, and our pal Eddie was there. And Eddie's in the league. And Eddie and I are playing each other this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm the two seed, and you are the five – were you the five seed? So yep. be, because I – uh, I, I feel very shameful. I had to wear a Chicago Bears jersey this this week because I lost a bet with Seth Rollins uh, because the Cowboys stink. I'm going to offer this wager up to you, Mr. Murphy, because you are a fan of the team I hate the most in the National Football League, and I am a fan of the team you hate the most in the National Football that, that League. That is correct, yes. So, <laughs> so why don't we do a little jersey wager? We'll have to pay it off either Monday or Wednesday next week depending on when the, the matchup is finalized. Yeah. If I win... You have to wear a Cowboys jersey throughout the entire podcast. Okay. Um, and if you win, I got to wear a Giants jersey uh, throughout the entire show. Now, does it have to be a specific player, like a player that uh, – or just, just the jersey? Like, like so I wouldn't wear Mitchell Trubisky. I wore Khalil Mack. I actually didn't feel that bad about it because I like Khalil Mack. Sure. I, but right, but no, you should no, have to wear like it's whoever whoever you want. Oh, like, so I can't wear like uh, – No. I, well, we have we have a whole bunch of jerseys. Over in the in the right, I'm sure they'll let us, let us borrow so, one. Right, for this. so so like I don't know who it'll be. I'll pick one out for you, but I, I feel like you probably don't like. I don't know. I'm, we'll figure it out. But th- that'll be it. So you know, that, like Eddie Rock in a Jason Witten jersey. Well, I was gonna say like, like Jalen Smith is uh, one of my favorite. Right, because he went to Notre, Notre, Dame, Notre Dame. You know, yeah. right. so I'm <laughs> fine. It won't, it won't be Jalen Smith. <laughs> now it'll be somebody. I'm, I'm trying to think of who, like maybe Zeke. You hate Zeke. You can't like Zach Martin. One of the other Notre Dame guy, it's fine. I don't think they're not going to have that. Jersey. I, I love that Eddie's trying to find like the loopholes no, no. here to yeah. make it okay. It, it, it'll, be, it'll probably be Zeke. I would think it'll be Zeke, and then you could throw like I don't know. I'd have to wear like Eli. Uh, I don't know, something like that. Oh man. Okay. Right. I'm I'm just, I'm all for it. Yeah. All right. We'll do it. Okay. Cool. Right. I like I kind of like my squad. I'm feeling pretty good. Wait. Let's have, <laughs> let's have, wait, wait. Wait. Let's have Marcus. Although Marcus always goes against me here. I don't know if I want to do this. I am. Uh, Let, let's let's go. Let's go. Uh, well, before we before we leave here, I'm going to bring up the the yeah, let's, matchup here. Here you go, Marcus. There's the matchup right there. Okay. You tell me. Let's see. Well, who's going to win? There you go. Huh, man. Uh, the quarterback this week is pretty even because uh, uh, what Eddie's got Russ. The, Eddie's got Russell. So this Wilson. year I'm going to have to change that now because I had Deion Washington in my lineup, so I'm going to end up having to put in. Mike Williams. Yeah, you'll put Mike Williams so in I'm there. I'm probably going to put a Mike Williams in or go to the waiver wire. Um, ooh, man. I – so I think – He's going to so go. Fab, Fabs, you've got, you've got the RB1 advantage, I think, with Zeke over, over Lev Bell, but I think he's got a slight advantage at RB2 with Derrick Henry over, over Chris Carson. Carson's close, though. It's close, close especially now. especially with no Rashad Penny. Yeah, it's definitely is. close. Yep. I think right now, especially if Adam Thielen doesn't play, Eddie's got a wide receiver two advantage. But they're playing the Chargers. Yeah. That's a tough matchup. I got DJ Moore against Seattle, and I got Galladay, who's going to get all the freaking targets Gall- against the Galladay, Yucks. Galladay, I think, is is a, is, a, is, a, is an advantage. But I just, you know, DJ Moore, I know he's played well. I just don't trust Kyle Allen, I think, is my bigger my bigger issue there. Um, the Travis Kelsey versus Jay yeah, Hollister a, is, a, is a huge destruction. advantage. Although... Although, you know, I mean, the matchup's not great for Kelsey. I- I'm just trying to talk myself into it. I know you are. Uh, how you, you got the Niners defense in after we sort of pooped well, I haven't, early. Well, I haven't. But, but, but again, I'm still I'm thinking about it. I still got potentially some moves to make. Actually, wait a minute. I have Mostert on my bench. So Mostert will go in for DeAndre Washington. And all these uh, all these games. You can't go games. against the team that's got re- Mostert. You can't do that. All, You're these, Niners all these are Sunday players, too, right? There are no Monday. And uh, no Goddard Monday. is actually going to go in for Hollister. So. Okay. Yeah. I haven't set my lineup yet. This is going to go all the way down to Sunday, though. It's gonna, it's it's going to come to the end of the day. So it's going to be fun. It'll be it. interesting. It's going to be fun. Yeah, you and I it. right now, but we're 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 on cloud nine, man. Right now, I got my Yankees gear on. You got your Yankees gear on. We're on cloud nine right now, so we can't really be enemies. Both of our football teams <laughs> are garbage, so we're fine. So we're gonna have a little fun with this uh, next week. I I will tell you. I will admit to this. When I was a kid, my my dad's a Giants fan. I did wear a Lawrence Taylor jersey. I had a Lawrence Taylor jersey my father bought for me because we went to the Giants Packers. It was the first football game I've ever been to. Lynn Dickey was the quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. You don't even know who that is because you're still just a youngster. You remember who Lynn Dickey is? I know the name. Okay. Yeah. He, 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 number 12, he used to wear the, the weird face mask. Um, and, and I did wear a Lawrence Taylor jersey 
to that game just for my dad. But that's the last time I ever wore a Giants jersey. Oh, well, it's a good guy to wear. But potentially, last, potentially last could uh, happen last again time. next week. So we'll yeah, see. We'll see. All right. That's it. We are done. Thanks to Jeff Ratcliffe for his time. As always, check him out at Pro Football Focus or on Twitter at Jeff Ratcliffe as well. We appreciate you downloading and listening. You know the drill. Tell two friends to tell two friends. Rate, review, and remember, if you lose a shoe at midnight, you're not in a fairy tale. You're just drunk. We'll see you on Friday. 